I think there's a lot of information in the first. I don't see how the public can effectively comment on the actual 1,500-page sediment report un until we've seen it. And it, it should be at least listed, in my view, on the website. I think you're doing a fine job, but I think that it's an awful lot of documentation to go through, and I don't think many of us have had a chance to, uh, to do that. So I would certainly uh, say, uh, you know, we'd very much like to have a little more time. I'll certainly submit extensive comments in writing, but um, we need more time to do that. I'm glad you said you were going to be right. I'd like to ask about how alternative one was arrived at, because as I understand the calculation that's in the report, it's taking 62 acres and going down 25 feet, which seems like going down much further than is necessary and perhaps over a much bigger area. And that's what comes up with a very big number. So I don't understand quite how the calculation was done. Well, essentially, if you look at the entire field area of the site, uh, just the vast majority of the site, all of the flat area is built. Even the buildings of there in 1925 are built on the field. A little strip along Kingston Point Park is native soil, which is that PA for the PAO since 57 here, encountered native soil. And virtually nowhere else in the flat paved area of that site. So it's well over 60 acres. Um, that's about an average depth of concentration. I'm not sure exactly what number you're referring to versus what we have, but it was an average uh, that was averaged out throughout the entire acreage. Uh, there's obviously some deeper sediments that go so deeper than 25 feet, and there's some that are probably as shallow as 15. Okay, but there's that much field all throughout the place. Um, and of course, where the native shoreline was, it would be even a little bit less, just like the slope of any shoreline. So your field could range from three feet at very small.